Okay, so um, hello everyone. Uh, happy Thursday. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 31. Um, please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. And please also remember to ask your questions for our, our good uh, Q&A session at the end. Um, let's uh, start with the updates from the engineering department and I will welcome now to Luca. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session again. And uh, thank you, Angie, for the introduction. So we are starting this engineering update with um, a new topic that came out uh, Friday last week. And we considered it our uh, top priority since then because it involves involved one of our major exchanges. So Alberto, I can see you are here on the call with us. So um, he will... Uh, uh, go. Uh, let me say he will present us what was that about, and yeah. uh, later I will uh, I will then continue with other engineering updates. So please, Alberto, feel free. Okay, thanks, Luca. Uh, yes, uh, during the last days we have been uh, focusing on improving the performances of the rescan procedure, uh, especially taking in consideration large wallets. That uh, is the scenario that we usually see um, for exchanges that obviously have a, lo a lot of transactions, a lot of keys, and so on. So, uh, in particular, one of the uh, one one node of an exchange had to rescan some last blocks uh, after restart, and we saw that uh, such rescan procedure was getting slow, very slow. So, to allow a faster restart in situations like these. Um, especially involving exchanges, we have been looking for uh, the bottleneck that make the process uh, slower. And uh, we yesterday, especially, we, we identified one of the, of the cause of this issue. And um, we already identified uh, the fix, uh, and that is currently being tested. But we are also looking to another uh, possible bottleneck that uh, is, a, is affecting the scan uh, performance. And, but this is still in progress. Uh, I mean, currently, this is not critical. Uh, the node uh, is running again and so on. But uh, we decided anyway to invest some time on it to, pre to prevent uh, uh, future issues and to make it uh, faster uh, next. OK. Uh, let's start with another topic. And uh, this is. Uh, uh, it's about uh, the beta circuit. And um, we have a great news uh, about the beta circuit because we were able to finish uh, first working version. So uh, in particular, this first demo circuit um, that will be used for beta um, is able to prove uh, that a certificate uh, was signed by a majority of signers. I mean, this is just, a, let me say, a demo circuit that we'll use for beta. But, okay, and let's go in maybe a, a little more in detail about this. So, um, let's say that um, the set of eligible signers are, uh, will be declared uh, during sidechain creation transaction, and even the threshold that is needed to be able to uh, provide a valid proof. The interesting thing um, about this is that uh, main chain uh, will not know anything about the logic behind the circuit, and I mean uh, verifying that the circuit verifies the signatures, but agnostically will validate the proof just with the sidechain related um, verifying key that, uh, and this will demonstrate a totally decoupled logic between sidechain and main chain. So uh, this is a, 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 a big step forward for beta because uh, we are proving, let me say, we are having a valid circuit, I mean, a, a demo circuit that will be used for beta and that will allow us to prove that the, that, uh, the model allow to totally decouple the main chain by the side chain and so having certificates that are validated without knowing uh, the logic that were behind them. And, and that's it from my side. Thanks, Luca. Thank you, Alberto. Great news about the circuit, of course. Uh, in fact, in parallel, as you were mentioning now, 
uh, when talking about it, uh, we were also uh, we have been also continuing other activities. For what uh, regards beta, I'd like to add that on the SDK side, we continued the code review for forger changes for Ouroboros and backward transfer changes, and this also uh, this will also continue next week. Uh, we then performed some minor history changes that are now waiting for final review. And uh, the uh, longest chain rule basic implementation um, is getting completed, so it will be ready for review in a few days. Tests are in progress. Then for what regards the main chain changes related to the backward transfer, uh, after the first code review uh, sessions, a few changes were requested, and those are being addressed in these days. So waiting for those changes to be performed before continuing the code review there. And uh, last but not least, uh, um, we are now also on the interfaces Rust, C++, and Rust Java, which uh, these interfaces needed on both the main chain and the side chain to call functions that are written in, a, in another language. So we need this kind of layer that allows translating from a language to the other. Uh, the intermediate code review of the pull request about Schnorr and VRF was performed. So now uh, proceeding with the one about pairing and empty curves. Uh, also, the activities related to Sphere by Horizon are ongoing. In particular, we are implementing a new feature, sign and verify message, which is going to be used for uh, future proposes in combination with other systems and applications. And we are also uh, implementing, uh, uh, going to implement a new price API to fix a display error in, that we have now in production. So it doesn't, um, which doesn't show the fiat counter value of uh, your Zen. The price API is being worked on right now. Uh, once ready, it will be implemented uh, into Sphere. And also bundled with the sign and verify message feature. So we aim to have a single release. Lastly, talking about the new Explorer and its integration with sidechains. So the Explorer was refactored in its structure uh, to become an external module of Bitcore. All dependencies were changed, and now it's possible to remove the Bitcoin Bitcore code from uh, the source code. Um, our Explorer already stores and exposes the transaction information related to sidechain through API calls. So for instance, uh, you can see the sidechain creation, forward transfers, and so on. And it also manages the information about all existing sidechains. Uh, and via API, it is possible to get all those sidechains information. So, for example, the balance, the high creation, the withdrawal epoch, for all or for a specific sidechain. The Explorer is uh, almost ready for review as well and to be tested and benchmarked to compare the differences from the current Explorer version that we have. As you can see, there is really a lot going on. Even if external conditions are making our life harder, we continue to give our best. That's it for now. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Now I'll pass the word to Spencer to give us the help desk updates. Good Thursday to everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, as usual, the representations of the service desk performance are, are pasted into the text channel. I'd like to point out that the charting is a little bit different. Ruben has done a great job of uh, automating a script that will create uh, what we think is a simpler and more informative charting format, uh, which you can see by double-clicking on the on the ticket and the actual metrics below i'll just uh recite uh some of them for you in the past seven days 64 tickets resolved we have 104 currently open 44 waiting for support 60 waiting for customer response we have a couple of customer responses that will automatically get closed if there is no response and we're moving some tickets over into pending because we're waiting for uh, some specific uh, software fix on that. Customer satisfaction on 21 reviews is a 4.0 out of a possible 5. And that's the report from Service Desk. Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo for the UX updates. 
Hey everyone, so quick update here. We've been working on the faucet uh, to the transition to the community hub. So it's something that I still can't unveil too much, so just keep tuned for the upcoming weeks. And uh, we also work on the price API issue that we had with the deprecated uh, API call from CoinMarketCap. So that's fixed and uh, Mac is currently testing it. So you should expect new builds from our wallets on the next couple of days. And it's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Awesome news. Let's continue with Rowan for the BD section. Thanks, Angie. Hello, everyone. Uh, two things from me. First up, quite a few members of the community were asking about when the Binance wallet would reopen. So just to clarify that that is now open for deposits and withdrawals. The team there have finished their wallet maintenance. Uh, and then the announcement I'd mentioned last week, uh, if you've been paying attention to our social media, you may have seen it already, but Zen has now been listed on Probit Exchange. So Probit are a large Korean exchange. They have two main sites. So they have probit.kr, the Korean site, and probit.com, their global site. Currently a top 20 exchange, huge user base, and they've listed us with a stable Tether pair and also with a Korean won pairing. So that's the first Korean won fiat on-ramp for Zen, uh, which I'm very excited and happy about. Huge thanks to the Probit guys and encourage the community to go and check them out. Uh, that's pretty much it for me at the moment. I was going to talk a little bit about the volatility we're seeing and external conditions, but I know that Rob's going to tee up something on that front when he jumps in at the end, so I shall leave that to him. But safe to say, for us, business as usual, we've seen this before, we're bound to see it again. Uh, we keep marching forward. Vano, do you want to jump in with an update from your side? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so as Lucy posted, uh, about blockchain UA got, got postponed to around to at least uh, around May 22nd because um, like uh, every major event in Europe because of the spread of coronavirus and to avoid uh, more spreads uh, Kiev, de Kiev decided to close down large gatherings and also uh, like I uh, said last week we are on our way to integrating in a large Russian language uh, media platform which I think we will announce soon. And that's all from me. <clears throat> Thank you, Rowan and Vano. Let's continue with uh, Jonas for some HTE and Academy updates. Hey, everyone. So over the last couple of days, I did a little restructuring um, on the Academy repository. Uh, it grew and grew. Uh, more and more infographics were added. And then... Um, once we added the French and Spanish translations, it all got a bit messy. So I felt like I need to take the time right now to clean it up a bit. So we're uh, ready for adding other languages and also the expert content. And people will find their way within the repository. Other than that, I've been reviewing Tuan's work on the HD and writing tasks for him on a daily basis. Um, Good job on his side, so shout out to Tuan. Um, great stuff there. Um, with regards to MLH, uh, I gave an update last week about that. Um, still, still waiting for the curriculum to be developed. Uh, application is done, and that would be it from my side. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, happy birthday, Midar, um, from we all. We wish you the best. And let's continue with the updates from uh, Lucy with the marketing section. Hey, everyone. Happy birthday, Mela. Um, so a uh, little update from the marketing side. Uh, we held uh, a fan, uh, fan art competition last month, and we are in the progress of voting for a winner. So one winner will have their design sold on our store and receive all proceeds. So we currently received over 200 votes. So the voting is ending this Sunday. So please head to our uh, blog and place your vote if you haven't done so. And uh, speaking of our store, it is now ac uh, accessible through our Facebook page and also Instagram. Um, and the pod podcast uh, called Untold Stories with Charlie Shred just released an interview with Rob earlier this week. Uh, the topic of this interview is, uh, is ZK Snark the key 
So Rob explains zero knowledge proofs, uh, sidechain technologies, how it could be used to get other side uh, to get other blockchains all working together uh, on uh, Horizon's platform, uh, and also Horizon's node market grows. Uh, in this interview. So it is really a uh, an interesting episode. I strongly recommend everyone checking it out. Uh, and uh, you can find the uh, podcast on our social feed. And besides this interview, uh, he did another one just yesterday with a podcast based in Guatemala called Digital Decentralized, uh, thanks to our Central and South American regional lead. Although for setting this up, uh, we will share this interview with the community as soon as the pod, uh, podcast releases it. Uh, and then uh, uh, also uh, on the sidechain uh, promotion uh, part, uh, it's just really exciting to hear all the good news about our sidechain development. So uh, as we are getting closer and closer to the beta release, we are working uh, just uh, uh, furiously on the background preparing for the uh, for the release. And one of the things that we are working on is st- uh, scheduling interviews and MAs uh, for our team. So we currently accepting uh, interview collaborations or common requests. And so if you or you know someone will be interested in getting some insights from the team uh, to get an opportunity to talk to uh, you know, Rob or Rob with other, or other members of our team about our sidechain development, um, please uh, reach out, definitely reach out and then let us know. Uh, and lastly, we are working with the growth of the team on the first new features and transitions. And that's it for me. Thank you, and stay safe, everyone. I'll pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. So some big news this week uh, about the faucet. So for those of you that haven't seen, we've integrated in a way with Brave Browser. So we really like Brave Browser. We like their mission of being a privacy-focused uh, blockchain project. And so we're giving away extra re- rewards if you use the faucet on Brave Browser. So last week, we had adjusted the ward, uh, rewards down a little bit, but I had mentioned that our goal is always to try to increase the rewards and continue to reward people for taking um, actions that are uh, good for our ecosystem, good for blockchain, good for privacy. And this is just one of the many steps we have over the course of the next couple of weeks that will actually be increasing uh, your guys' rewards. So please make sure to check out uh, check out the faucet on Brave. Uh, you don't have to do anything. We'll automatically detect that you're on Brave. And then your 20% bonus will be added automatically. So that's really exciting. That was a big, big job that Gustavo and Tuan hustled uh, to create, and they did an amazing job. Um, I mean, everything is everything that th- those two do is is just awesome. So thank you, Gustavo and Tuan, for that. Um, also, in, in terms of WhatsApp, um, you all know that we launched WhatsApp. The phone number is on getsend.cash. Uh, we'll be releasing the first version of the WhatsApp bot uh, in the next two weeks. So we kind of have bots for Facebook, which helps with uh, customer service. Right now, WhatsApp, we don't have a bot. It's just me answering people, which is obviously not very scalable. Um, So we are working on a bot. Uh, The purpose is to help people and get them to the right place faster. Uh, And that's it for me. Thanks and have a great week. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. Let's continue with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Well, great updates, everyone. So over the last year, our focus uh, was building our core engineering, and we are completing the engineering team with a new hire on the Horizon Lab slide uh, as our DevOps in Milan. So Luigi will start in April, and he will be um, working with uh, to support our developers along with Chronic and serve as our GitHub maintainer. Uh, Now we're redirecting efforts to build our product team. As a first step, we are surveying our products to help refine our product strategy. And what does this mean? Uh, We will retire some products that are out there and we focus resources on those that are aligned with our strategy. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup there. I'm also collaborating with the growth, growth team to ensure we have the proper technical resources to move forward on the growth initiatives that uh, Jonathan and Rob are are spearheading and a big shout out to 
Jonathan, Gustavo, Lucy, the design team, and Tuan for supporting the growth initiative. It, it's really fantastic to see that the team forming on moving forward with our growth. And from a project manager perspective, Luca, Angie, and Ruben have been working to make sure that all the dependencies are moving forward with the Zendi support, the, the new feature being implemented on Sphere, the price API issues, and uh, that are affecting were affecting several of our, our products and the changes to the faucet. So all this, all these are uh, active projects, and the Luca, Angie, Ruben are the glue that uh, keep the, the momentum going. And lastly, uh, uh, Spencer, you mentioned uh, Ruben's report. So also shout out to Ruben, uh, who is saving the support team about two hours per week uh, and making visible, uh, making the, the visibility for t- uh, tickets easier and, and supporting the metrics and, and analysis of, of our data. So it's uh, every saving counts. So thank you, Ruben, for taking this initiative. And this, that's it for, for my side. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rosario. Ralph, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah, I, I would, Angie. There's, uh, it's kind of difficult to, to bring up, and uh, some of y'all uh, are aware and experiencing this, but the, regarding the COVID-19, the, the coronavirus, um, the spread in a lot of places is exponential. So... You know, I know our Italian team knows this, certainly, but things, they first change slowly. It looks like very little is happening, and, and then it goes quick. So I'm encouraging everybody on the team to mentally readjust quickly and project forward kind of things that are going to be happening and, and what people are going to be going through. And in this regards, you know, our thoughts, our working together, our discussions, email, our public-facing activity, we want to make sure we're not tone deaf to the to the current situation or the potential possible situation that people are going through. So, you know, encouraging self-isolation to avoid gatherings of people, it, we, we probably want to avoid that here over the next few months. And also realize there's going to be a lot of unhappy people in the next few months. There's, we're already seeing that, you know, businesses are, are running out of money and laying off people. Uh, parents and grandparents have life-threatening illnesses and, and in some cases death. These are things that people are going to be going through with their family. And people are going to have to readjust their viewpoints quickly. And nobody likes change. And there's going to be a lot of cognitive dissonance. So people are going to act weird when their view of what should be happening in the world isn't matching up to the way the world's actually working. Um, And so everybody's going to deal with this in in a different way, but it's probably going to be easier to be low-key, business-like, understanding, um, you know, give people benefit of the doubt, uh, a little bit of slack, and and be careful at at attempts at humor. And so we're going to work our way through all this in the next year. Please be supportive and sensitive to others that are going through difficult times because it's going to happen. Thank you, Rolf. And now we have Rolf for the final part. Thank you, Angie and Rolf, spot on. Thank you for for prefacing uh, everything with that. Um, so we are going through very wild times, guys. Uh, so first and foremost, just you know, really reiterating what Rolf said, please take care of yourselves, your families, your communities. Be the calming voices, remain calm yourselves, you know, but be strong and support others who might be in need. Um, that said, as a project, this is where we're putting our warrior faces on, um, not, not to make light of the situation, but this is exactly what we're doing. So we're powering through what's going on right now. And we have to realize that we have, we will have sensitivities within our community. People are panicking across the board in different markets, uh, including the currency. And, you know, as a project, it's business as usual for us in some ways, but in other ways, we're taking uh, very, very strict precautions. So what's going on with us? I'll, I'll just give you guys all an update. Our Milan office is closed. No surprise there. So Milan was the focal point for the European outbreak. Our team is okay and everyone's working remotely. Um, as you can see here, though, we're still powering forward with everything that we're doing. Um, so as of now, uh, we, we aren't you know, necessarily slipping milestones, but that could be the case depending on how things evolve and how you know, resource constraints uh, come about, if they do. 
Um, but you know, at least as of right now, we're continuing to make significant progress. You can see on the engineering side. Um, so the, the big update that you, you guys heard here about our the circuit construction being complete for our beta release is huge. I mean, th this is an absolutely huge milestone for us um, because what this means is that we have actually now a totally decoupled consensus uh, using a circuit for transactions that are validated from sidechain to main chain. Um, that's a really big deal, and we're still powering forward on beta. Hopefully, everything's still on track. I mean, because we are now working remotely instead of in person, you know, you could expect some some potential delays on uh, delivery, but more to come on that. Um, the whole idea of standing up an in-house product team is, for me, extremely exciting um, because now what you're going to see, and there'll be more updates, you know, as we go forward on this, but you're going to see a coherent product strategy. Uh, with coordinated efforts from within and external to the team. Um, so one coordinated strategy where we actually look through, uh, you know, what what are user profiles for which types of products and how are we actually uh, helping and facilitating our community with particular products. So that's a really big deal. Very happy to stand that up. Um, as you heard from Rowan, we're continuing to deliver on the business development front. Probit is a very important listing for us, not only because they have a very large Korean community, but those two pairs are, are extremely important. So the USDT pair, the, the stable tether, uh, as well as a, actually a, a Korean won on off ramp for Zen. Uh, absolutely huge for us. Um, so big kudos to the BD team on that. That's very good news for everyone. Um, I have to say, guys, so uh, throughout all of this, despite, you know, we, we have to be cautious, we have to be conservative, but now is the time that the best projects will be differentiated from everyone else. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I am so confident that we are one of the best projects out there and our team is one of the most elite teams. So we're going to continue powering forward and this will be the time where we really differentiate ourselves from the crowd. Okay. So, so all of that said, guys, uh, now on, on a team front, so I said this to our team on an internal call on Monday, we start the week off with, with the team to get everyone synced uh, and morale is key. So we have to support each other. This is, you know, we can talk technology, we can talk product, and these are extremely important parts of blockchain ecosystems, but we we are powered by a group of human beings, right? So we, we have some amazing human beings working together within a team, within our community. Now is the time that we have to come together. We have to support each other and realize this is an extremely stressful environment. So just as individuals, and this is what I tell, tell the team, focus on your job, focus on the details of your job, and focus on on your habits. You know, get continue to get things done. Be efficient. Try not to focus on things outside of your control. Of course, we have to be cognizant of things outside of our control. But as we go through you know, tough tough times, we have to focus on the things that we can do to improve and just focus hard on them and, and accelerate into them. Okay, so um, just from a pragmatic perspective, we have to tighten up some of our cost controls. And you know, I'm very happy with the work that Rowan and and Michelle have done on the accounting and ops side to actually implement cost controls. This is just a really good way of doing business and in the environment that they've set up is great. But we, now we have to be more judicious than ever about taking on any new projects. So basically spending on the margin, we have to be extremely conservative about. And there's no surprise there, guys. We Our budget is denominated in Zen. You can see what's happening with the markets right now. So we have to uh, treat this, uh, you know, this reality that we're in right now head on. Uh, not deny the reality that we have, but take appropriate actions for it. That said, we also have to push hard on revenue opportunities. Um, there was a nuance of what Jonathan mentioned, which I think is extremely exciting, is the relationship we have with Brave is we have a very large community that we've been able to build around the faucet, which is really evolving into more of a, a community hub for us. And we are looking at ways to monetize some of this traffic. So um, there, there are very sensible ways where we want to cross promote projects that also promote our values, things like privacy, um, in particular, you know, blockchain projects that advocate privacy. We want to promote them. If we can do this in win-win ways and earn external revenues from it, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And we're already making some serious progress there. So we have to think through, we have a very ambitious 2020 roadmap. This roadmap will differentiate us significantly within the industry. Uh, but the roadmap re needs resources to execute. We've programmed in, I think, a very aggressive but realistic schedule for the year. And now we are taking uh, very pragmatic, very proactive uh, crisis management steps. Everything from 
you know, re- redoubling our communication with the community. We want to make sure you guys know exactly what's going on with the project. We want you to know in a timely manner, and we want it to be in a way where you can take action yourselves to contribute to the project and help everything that's going on here. Because this project is not about a small team that we have, you know, in house. This project is about the hundreds of thousands of community members that we have. Um, so we're we're looking at opportunities across the board. We're looking to mitigate the risks that we have. Ultimately, guys, like I said. These are the times that differentiate projects. I have no doubt that Horizon will be one of the top projects that emerges, not just from this, but emerges over over time to be one of the dominant projects in the industry. So that's all I have, guys. I know we're, we're bumping up against the time limit. Lucy, do you want to open this up to any mentee questions? Yes. So the number one questions, I think you just answered perfectly, which is, is coronavirus affecting Horizon at all? Uh, and you, you know, you just gave uh, give the perfect, perfect answer. And I think I can just add one, uh, maybe just one little thing is that uh, right now um, we are not hosting or participating in any orientation meetups or events during the uh, the epidemic. But um, we, what we are doing is well, even more on orientations, like I mentioned earlier about setting up interviews, AMAs, presentations for the team. So we're getting out, uh, getting our team out there digi- uh, digitally to continue engaging uh, with the uh, with the spreading horizon vision. Uh, and time like at times like this, we can really uh, use help to get this kind of opportunities for us. So again, um, uh, you know, if you anyone be sitting talking to us, uh, reach out to us. Do you have anything else to add about? Um, question no that's perfect lucy thank you thanks so the next one is what will be the first sidechain application for horizon uh this is a fun question so i don't know that's just the reality but we're tackling two ways so we have uh, a very um you know uh, uh, professional development team at horizon labs that's looking at what would be the highest impact say either commercial or infrastructure play for the ecosystem and by infrastructure play, I'll just throw this out there as an example that we're considering, would be something like a maker DAO type of price stable asset suite. And we're evaluating it very closely right now to see, can we map that type of functionality to the tech stack that we're building with our sidechain system? Um, so that's the most important thing that I think we're looking at from like what would be an infrastructure play for the ecosystem. And because it opens up a lot of doors for a lot of different things. One would be on the commercial side, we have some potentially very large distribution channels where we can plug products like uh, a Zen Peso or a Zen Dollar. Um, so that's a very interesting business opportunity that could also drive significant organic demand for Zen. And you know, as an infrastructure, this also opens the door uh, for more, more complex and extremely important DeFi or decentralized finance applications. Things like lending, earning interest by by committing Zen into, say, like uh, price stable assets, um, doing micro lending and things like that. There are a lot of opportunities that will come with it. Now, on the other side of this, we're also looking at uh, a community competition where we would put um, an interesting bounty program out there and maybe use this as the first Horizon developer or HDE project to fund where we would fund a community effort to come up with the most interesting and fun sidechain application and then really leave it to the community to decide on that one. Um, so I, I think these are two interesting ways to tackle the same problem. They're very complementary. So really excited for what we have on the horizon for that. Thank you, Rob. Uh, last question. Is there a date for sidechain beta release? Uh, okay, so I, I would have said, I would have punted this to Rosario or Alberto and, and asked for the date, but. Uh, what, what I'm saying now is no, I, and I say this um, very lightly because, uh, well, lightly might be the wrong word, but saying this because now we have a bit of a disruption to some operations. And by this, I mean the, the Milan office is closed, so people are working in a distributed manner, uh, which is, I would say, robust in some sense, but also less efficient in other sense. Uh, we also had a few-day um a diversion of engineering effort looking at uh, wallet efficiencies to make um, you know, rescanning a wallet easier because we saw one of our major exchange partners was was taking uh, or having some difficulty or at least timeline rescanning a wallet that was um, uh, 
started in a timely fashion. So we, we diverted some energy there. All that to say that you know we may have uh, you know some some days or maybe a week or so slip on it. So I'm not going to give a specific date, but it's it's imminent on release. Super exciting. Um, that's it. That's uh, uh, these are the top three questions for today's weekly insider. So post rest of the questions and answers are on the insider chat channel here on Discord. Thank you, everyone, and back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, Rob and Lucy. I'm still waiting for Pets of Horizon, so hopefully we'll have that soon. <laughs> have a great day, y'all, and we keep in touch. Bye-bye.